Welcome to the Dom Sub Devotion Podcast. Every episode of Dom Sub Devotion is an authentic reflection of our real life in a loving 24 7 DS marriage. If you crave the passion and intensity of a power exchange dynamic inside of a deeply loving and intimate relationship, you found the right place. You can always find more from us in the show notes and at infinitedevotion.com. Thank you for listening. Today's podcast, I want to talk about the importance of slowness in men. We've talked a lot in the past about why it's important for women to slow down, to slow down the pace of their lives for all of the reasons we've talked about quite a bit. But this is also an important thing for men to recognize that we need to slow ourselves down. Because women, especially submissive feminine women, are going to feel us in the way that we show up and the way that we live our lives. And this is been something that has evolved in me and you've witnessed this a lot in me over the years as I've changed quite a bit. So I guess to start from your perspective, why is it important to you as a woman to, for a man, for me as your man to slow down and slow down the pace of my life? I feel everything about my experience of you, including like every, every little thing. And so this wasn't something that I was always aware of, but I would say you've always been a slow-ish paced guy because it, that stood out to me. The more you've come into yourself, the more you've been intentional about how that affects everything about the pace of your life. And when I was living in such a survival mode, I didn't quite notice it. And so when I tried to do this for my, well, because you were asking me to slow down my pace, it was really, really uncomfortable. But it's also what has allowed me to connect to my whole felt experience of the man that you are and be able to respond with feedback, with whatever I'm feeling, and share that openly. And so I notice when. I have to speak about my other experience, my experience of other men here, because I don't notice this in you. I notice the very opposite. So when I'm around men who have quick fire energy, who talk fast, who move fast, who don't listen, who just have this like nervousness about them, insecurity, <laughs> false confidence masked by arrogance, like all of that to me is what I feel in response to the men. And I'm speaking to what is happening on the inside but how it's displayed is on the outside. So I connect with their inner experience just by being in their presence. So when you talk about a quick fire energy, a guy who's, let's say twitchy almost, right? Someone who's really quick, a quick talker, mm -hmm. a, and very reactive. What does that feel like in your body when you're around a man who is like that? It doesn't put me at ease. It makes me somewhat uncomfortable. 
because it's hard to actually have a conversation with somebody like that. So the longer <laughs> that I'm in that man's presence, the more I just almost start to feel like I'm crawling in my skin. It's just a discomfort, an unsettling feel, an unsafe feel to my nervous system. And if you're around someone like that for a longer period of time, maybe longer than it feels good to you, I would imagine that you almost have to start to shut down or pull back, like walls have to go up to protect yourself a little bit. Well, that's kind of hard to speak to because I, I don't stay <laughs> around that kind of energy long. I will remove myself, but to your point, I would say probably yes. It really depends on the circumstances. Are you with me? Are you not? Because having your grounded presence with me actually helps me. If I was in a man's presence by myself, I don't think I could stay. Like It would be so uncomfortable that I, at the point where I am at, I can't self-abandon in that way. There's no reason to for me. And this gets at what it means for a woman to be open and receptive. Yeah. <laughs> because you've known and been around with people in your past before we were together who were extraordinarily quick and like twitchy and reactive and very pointed with just the way that they spoke and acted. Yes, I sure was. And I had no idea. So you could tolerate it differently. Yeah, I should finish that statement. I had no idea how it was impacting me. Like I noticed that, but because it was very present in my life, Yeah. but it was just like, that's just how he is. That was to the extent of my noticing. Right. Not the impact that it was having on me inside. Right. Because before you do the kind of work that we talk about here on this podcast and in that we live in our lives, we talk about it because we live it. Before you've done that work, you aren't going to be as connected to your inner experience to know what's going on with you. No, I sure wasn't. I was very disconnected. And what I've watched happen with you is you've opened yourself up by learning to trust yourself, listen to yourself, honor yourself, value yourself, respect yourself. And as you've done that, you've opened in a way that just lets you be more aware of what's always been there. Absolutely. And a big reason why I've gotten to this point of feeling that openness in my body is because of who you are and how you've shown up for me. And this is something, well, first of all, I was raised by a man who has a very slow paced energy to him, very calm man in my father. Yes, he sure is. And I've, I've always admired that about him. Like this man, nothing, I've never seen him shaken up. I've never seen him reactive. And that learned behavior, genetics, I don't know, but I, I did absorb a lot of that from him. I definitely notice it more and more as I get older and see how unique that is about him and how I admire that about him. So I did learn that, but I also then went through my own process of building my own ego and having my own reactivity and my own frustration and resentments and all the things that I've now had to work through to come out of. But 
I've done this work to intentionally slow down my my life, but not so much about the external, right? The external slowing down is actually reflected, reflective of slowing down the internal experience that I have. This is like, you talk about nervous system work. It's like the way that my nervous system hums, the amount of energy and speed and click, like how fast paced that is clicking inside of myself is displayed in how fast I walk, how fast I eat, how fast I talk. And you react moment to moment, breath by breath to that energy. So my curiosity, my first curiosity with that is, do you notice the way that you mirror that so immediately? That's a great question. I would have to say probably not because it's not something that I'm trying to pay attention to. I'm just in my experience. But I be, because I'm so used to you, like we spend a lot of time together and so that's pretty normal and natural for me to experience. And so I would say that I always notice the contrast. It's one of the ways that I see myself is by watching you. Because if you are getting nervous or tense, or even if you are getting reactive and your ego is rising up, it actually probably has something to do with what's going on inside of me. You can almost, I can almost watch myself and see myself in you sometimes before I can even notice that it's going on in me. That's really interesting. I feel like I experienced that recently in another way and how what I was experiencing, once you were able to tune into your experience, it was like, oh, <laughs> it was actually because of you. <laughs> but if I notice you getting nervous, or if I notice you getting tense, and then I look inside myself, I can usually find some nervousness or some tension in me. This is a part of where polarity plays into this because we are in, when we're in these deep relationships where we're doing this deep consciousness work, we are not doing this independently. We are really interwoven with each other's experience in every breath. So you talked a little bit about how presence matters to you and groundedness. What does it feel like to you when I am able to stay grounded? When you might be having more of an emotionally turbulent experience? What does that do for you? It grounds me because you know, of where I am now and how I can see myself and be really in tune with whatever the experience is. I'm that open that like just, I shared this before, but just being in your presence impacts me positively. And so even taking that to the next level of being able to physically connect with you just calms and grounds my whole body and it which therefore helps my mind just chill out and yeah that's also taken a lot of work on my part to be able to get there and to be present and just let go even if my ego wants to take me on a ride of fear or worry or whatever that is. I, I can just lay things down in a way that I wasn't able to in, in the past. 
but it's almost as if like let's say we were out you know that one day we were at costco right I, I think i shared about this but just being in the presence of a lot of energy very full very busy lots of people yeah that's just not my favorite kind of place to be especially in a building but i can't always avoid that in life right but what happened when we got home is we go to the bedroom we lay down i put my body physically connected to you and it's just like it just calms me i don't even know what else to say about it i can't remember if i also cried out energy because that sometimes is the way things move too so you've mentioned a couple times that it calms you what does it require what do you require from me in order for you to feel that calm well your grounded energy and your presence of just being with me i can feel when you're off lost in your head or just distracted thinking about something else i just feel that not very often <laughs> Because you have a, you're with me. And I've always appreciated that about you. Like there's always been a presence that you've brought me. Even rewind us quite a bit. But you've only honed that skill, if you will. The more inner strength that you've developed. And the more presence that you've been able to instill in yourself for your own sake of life for me what i see happen in the way the way that i notice this between us is just like if i look at you and i see you being tense and i look inside myself can i find anything i'm ten tense about anything that i'm nervous about anything that has me holding tension in my body, if I relax that, rather than looking at you and saying, you're tense, how do I get you to not be tense? If I look at myself and say, where am I tense? How can I relax? How, for the guys listening to this, even if you're not a guy who likes some of the woo-woo kind of spiritual stuff, if that, some of the things we talk about don't resonate with everybody. I get it. But I want you to try this sometime. When you notice your woman feeling tense, pay attention look, to your own body. Feel like this spot right on your sternum. I'm, I'm giving away a little bit of how the sausage is made here in terms of how I open you up when I feel you being tense. I've never told you this before. I know I was going to say I love hearing this because you don't share that experience. I'm sharing it for the I'm sharing it for the guys who notice tension in their woman and want to help calm her down. Just try this. Feel your own body. And especially feel like your sternum, the place where your ribs come together in the middle of your chest. Notice that spot in you and see if you can just feel that area of your body relaxing, op opening. Imagine you're just trying to open that part of yourself up and relax it deeply when you're noticing her being tense. Just feel that part. When I feel that part of myself relaxing, it is fascinating because you can be shut down. You can be closed off. You can be not talking to me. You can be lost in your own head and in your own chaos. And when I go inside myself and relax this spot in me, you open up and you start speaking and you start crying and you start expressing. And all I have to do, I don't have to do anything to you or for you or try to fix you. If I just relax my own body, you relax too. If I open myself up, you open up. And this is why men can be so impactful for women, not by doing anything, but by doing 
Not by doing anything for you, but doing it in myself. That's fascinating. Thank you for sharing that. I gave away one of my tricks. <laughs> sure. I wouldn't call it a trick. I would call that a very helpful tool. It's, this is what presence is. We throw this word around like we assume that people understand what it means. But I want to talk about this a little bit about presence. Because what presence means is to be present in this moment and to be present in your body. To be right where you are, not in your head, not thinking, not in your worry, not in your fear, but to just be here. Can you notice the difference when I'm here and when I'm lost in my head? You kind of said you could, but... Absolutely, I can. What's different? I, it's just something I feel. Exactly. I don't, ha there's no words to completely describe it. It's only by doing, doing the work. And I hesitate to even use that phrase because it gets so overused, but I'm going to say it this way, by paying attention to myself enough to know where I am not present right here, right now, where I'm not actually looking you in the eyes, where I'm kind of gazing in your direction, but I'm actually zoned out and I'm thinking about something else. I have to be able to see those things, notice where, and, and call myself out on them. To bring myself back into the moment. And you're laughing. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just I kind of have a funny memory of an experience, not with you. <laughs> and of a guy who lost presence. I didn't mean to start laughing at you. <laughs> Say more. So I was just having a conversation with a guy across a table and <laughs> clearly he was trying to flatter me, maybe a little bit too hard, but I was sharing something. I didn't know this guy. It was, I just had met him and he was looking at me and I could tell he was gone. And he actually called, said, I'm sorry. I wasn't listening to what you said. I was just amazed by your beauty or something to that point. He was trying real hard. He was trying really hard. <laughs> and, but I remember that like, kind of just what the fuck moment. Like, how can you not, hear what I'm saying. Like you're right there. So I just let it go and just whatever. It, it didn't really matter, but I, I felt that it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Presence is something that has to be intentionally honed. We live in a very extremely hyper distracted world and a world where a lot of times it can feel like we're always rushed. Everything is in a hurry. We have to get somewhere. We have things to do. We have places to be. We can't forget this. And there's this extremely busy feel that so many people go through life with. I think there's an addiction to busy because it's a distraction. But when we notice that we are not present as men, and we start to just settle ourselves into the moment that we're in, it doesn't mean we have to do less all the time. We can actually be a lot more efficient when we're present. We can 
get more done when we're present because we're doing what we're actually doing. I call this having integrity to the moment. Actually paying attention to what you're doing when you're doing it. And when we can bring that energy to the moments of our life, the world around us reacts differently to us. And this is especially with a woman that we are in a relationship with. You react differently to me when I'm, even if I'm not with you. I'll use this example. We were sitting across the room from each other within the last week or so here. I was very focused on something I was working on. And I felt eyeballs burning into the side of my head. <laughs> and they were yours. You were watching me be very present with something that I was going very, I was very deeply focused on something. What was your experience of that? Oh, I was so turned on. <laughs> I was sitting there reading sexy fiction and I try to glance up and look at you. And I could feel, for one, I love your intellect. That's sexy in and of itself. And so when I see the intellect and I can see the presence with yourself and what you're doing, Oh my gosh, that makes my pussy wet. And that's exactly why I wanted to go here. Because for men, we want, it to, we want our women to be turned on by us. And we think we have to do something a lot of times to earn it. I have to do this or push this button or turn this knob or say this thing or whatever. But I was not paying any attention to you whatsoever. Nope. Slowing down and focusing and being present with what I'm doing impacts you even when I'm not paying attention to you. Absolutely. So what are some ways besides focusing on my work and we can just generalize this maybe to men in general, ways that you have witnessed men just out in public randomly, f friends of ours, where their presence in the way that they were living their lives made a noticeable impact on you. Well, any time we're out and we are engaging with It's anyone in general, but I'll speak to men. I pay attention to eye contact. I pay attention to, like, I can feel if they're listening or not. And I also pay attention to their ability to receive what I have to say and listen. And just that engagement in, in conversation. And it's always a turn on when a man like i just feel it i don't know what else to say about it i want to get specific to some little some of the little details for okay. example walking the difference between a man who's rushing and hurrying in his pace of walking or who's walking with purpose and bringing his presence to his to his pace of walking. All I would say is that I notice the difference. It stands out because if I'm not engaging with them, that's just different altogether. It really is about this energy of calm inside of, of a man. That's what groundedness is. That's what presence starts with is being calm. 
Absolutely. The, the reason I bring up the engagement piece is because I can look at a man. There's a guy who walks around our neighborhood and he walks really slow. But when I talk to him, I can feel that he's just not completely there. I can feel his shutdown of himself. So that's why I'm bringing up the engagement versus not, because a guy can be walking super slow and he's just shut down. But on the flip side to that, when I am out and about and I see a guy, you know, I watch couples, how they interact. And I would say women probably walk faster than most men. <laughs> but I can, I just notice and feel an energy that I'm not going to finish that sentence. I just feel the energy and the difference. So what's the difference in what you feel between someone who is calm, grounded, and present versus someone who is calm, shut down, and boring? I will be drawn into a man the first three words you said, calm, grounded, and present. And I will not want to engage with the opposing. Because a man also who isn't present really doesn't even know how to have a conversation. I think a lot of times we associate slowness with boredom, with being blah I could see why people do that I guess but then we also I think everyone knows someone or has met someone who has a very calm intensity to them and that is a very very different feeling and that's the kind of slowness and calm that I'm talking about here it doesn't mean being boring. No. And the difference is presence. It's having intention around the way that we are going through our lives. We were out having a drink and I started talking to a guy and he was telling me about this place they're buying and how it has a whole bunch of land and he's glad because like there was a lot of stuff for him to do and he was very much telling me that he always needed something to do he couldn't not be doing something and I just chuckled at that because I used to live that and obviously I'm a woman and he's a man. There's a difference there. But my point is that when I shared that I've worked out of that and I live a slower pace of life and it has just felt so, so good. And he asked me, you know, like, what do you do all day? And I'm like, whatever I want to. He's like, but you're busy, right? And I'm like, I don't use that word. No, I don't want to be busy. He's like, but you're fulfilled, right? And I'm like, I'm very fulfilled. Thank you. Yes. But I'm not busy. Even if my, I'm spending my time however I want, it's not a busy feel. It's not a rushing to the next thing. And even the way he spoke, to me, I could just feel the, like, the discomfort with me talking about slowing down. Right. And he doesn't even know me. <laughs> it's fun having these conversations with random people because you can 
start to see how people are inside of themselves just by reflecting something different to them and seeing how they respond to it. The next thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about here is how the, the slowness and the calm and presence in a man helps to create safety for a woman who's in our life. We will think a lot of times as men when we think about safety. The tendency will be to like, I'm physically protecting you. Or if you're feeling emotionally upset to tell you that you're safe or that I've got you or you know, whatever, basically trying to convince you that you're safe. Slowness is a way to show you that you're safe without having to say anything. Absolutely. Because if a man being in a very fast paced energy feels unsafe, a man being very calm and grounded can bring a lot of safety to a person that we're with, but also to more than just that. I wanted to share a story about this bouncer at a bar restaurant that we were at down in Florida one time on a vacation years ago. And this guy, I noticed him as soon as we walked in there and he made me feel safe. I'm a big guy. <laughs> he was tall. He was, he was a big guy. Yeah. I'm just about six, four. He was probably a little bit taller than me. I think so. And he was a, a strong built guy, mm -hmm. but it wasn't about his physical size. It was this absolute serenity in his energy that I could feel as he just looked around and surveyed everything. He just had his eye on everything that was going on. And you could just feel in him that he had that whole place under control. And if anything happened, I could tell that he could handle it. And he didn't have to say a damn word. He did eventually come over and talk to us. Mm -hmm. And really gave off that same energy in conversation. Absolutely, he did. Made such an impact. I'll never forget that guy. Made such an impact on me. Because it showed me how, how much calm and groundedness and safety one man can bring to an entire like an entire restaurant full of people just by standing there and trusting in himself that whatever happens here, he's got it. Yeah. And we can feel this even as, like men, we can feel this if we let ourselves the impact that has one grounded man. Think about what that can do to your woman. If you can be that man. But we've got to slow down inside. Like I kind of shared before, I always felt that in you. Sure, you had your own reactivity to work out of, but you have also always had this confidence in yourself, even if you've had to, you know, work through some of the false sense of confidence. I get it. But there's always been something in you. And I have watched and experienced myself literally just be able to let go my nervous system unwind because we only know our own experience. And you can hear about a different kind of life experience, but the way our minds work, the way we react, like what we grow accustomed to. I grew up out in the country. 
I grew up on a farm. It was quieter. Very different than a child who grows up in New York City who's constantly around noise, traffic, whatever. Like that's energy you're still taking in too. And so our nervous systems adapt to whatever our life experiences are on top of then the emotional experiences and everything else. And so I didn't know the fears that I carried inside of my body, the ways that I tried to protect myself, the ways that I paid attention to everything, the way my memory would remember so much that now I feel like I don't remember anything. <laughs> but again, I only knew my experience. So how could I know something different or life could be different? It was just mine. But I've watched my whole body unwind in any tension. That's just how I'm going to summarize it. The fears, the energy, the tension, whatever it is. And you have given me so much attention and presence, like solidly especially for the last four years of our lives. And wow, am I a different woman because of it. And sometimes you don't say anything. Sometimes I need you to not say anything. <laughs> but you're with me. Has that helped you feel more submissive? Yeah. Just presence and attention. Absolutely. Like, because it's allowed me to let go of any sort of like grasping and control and whatever. And underneath all of that is like, I'm yours. Use me. <laughs> <laughs> in all the fun ways. This is why I teach men that dominance is not about controlling your submissive. It's about controlling yourself. If you want a woman to submit to you, she will. If you are solid enough in yourself, she'll just melt right into you. I've watched you just melt into me. Mm hmm. I don't have to make you do anything. No. Nope. In reality, I can't make you do anything. Because as soon as I start trying to apply force to something that I'm wanting from you, if you aren't already in a place to be doing that thing or to be giving that thing to me, as soon as I start to apply force, resistance that's already in you kicks in and it makes it even harder. But when I turn that focus inward, again, focus on my own body, focus on relaxing my body, hold, like holding the desire for what it is that I want, but detaching from forcefulness or expectation around it and letting it just be pure desire, but then op opening myself up, physically relaxing, bringing presence into my own body. Breathing slowly, speaking slowly, speaking less. My own biggest challenge, speaking less. You've gotten better. <laughs> there was something that I wanted to share in response. Oh, I know. The thing is, you can't control my internal experience. That is the something that is something the dominant is out of control of. But when you are show up as the man you are, I'm not going to keep reiterating what all that is. I've talked a lot about a lot about it. I have literally watched myself just surrender without trying. I've watched myself experience because I'm holding the desire to be all of myself at soul level. I, I literally just, it just continues to happen. You're not forcing, I'm not trying. 
I reflect my experience to you, you learn. You don't even share a lot of your experience with me. Once in a while, I ask questions because I'm, it's to reflect on my own experience, kind of like, this is what I was feeling. And I felt so aligned, like I was quote unquote right. But at the same time, I've known in the past that I have quote unquote felt right and it was coming from my ego. And so I'm learning what these internal felt truths are and that I share it with you. And you're like, yeah, I actually saw this in myself. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, this happened just a couple of days ago, right? I, yeah. I got a little graspy and a little bit out of presence and in my head and probably a little bit into neediness and you freaked out and then i reacted by doing more of that and it didn't go well and then eventually you came back to me and i had to own like yeah you you're right i was not present i was not in my own inner dominance i wasn't in my inner strength there i was wrapped up in trying to make you be different yeah i remember sharing like i don't need to hear anything i just need you to listen with me and and be with me and you wanted to try to fix my <laughs> experience yeah even though i knew exactly what my experience was and i'm like i know exactly what i need right now is just to love this right here i just want you to love me and so i share that you with all the humility swallowed your pride and you're like yeah actually you were right about this and i'm sorry and I'm like okay cool and then we both let go of that and it's like all right we both learned something here that's awesome but it also took a little bit of time for everything to settle back down because when i lose presence and you then you don't just lose presence in yourself you also don't have me there holding the, I hate the phrase holding space, but I'm, if I'm not solid in myself, you don't have me to lean into. Mm -hmm. And so your emotional experience now becomes one that isn't contained by my strength. So if I lose presence, and you are now going uncontained without me to lean as something strong to lean into. Mm -hmm. It takes a little time. First, I've got to get me back into me. I have to come back into my own body. I have to get settled back into my experience. I have to slow myself down. And then I've got to give you a little bit of time to settle back into that because you just broke through the walls and you're out in i think i used the finding nemo reference where <laughs> you're nemo out in the ocean and i'm like nemo's dad saying come back and so it takes a little bit of time for you to come and settle back in and that's where i also have to be patient but having this control over my own presence the self-control is how I reflect a state of inner strength to you without having to say anything. And that bringing this back around to inner dominance and why men, we don't, I don't need to dom you. I don't need to dominate you in a 24 seven dom sub relationship. I'm not trying to dom you 24 hours a day. I'm trying to dom myself into a state of presence and solidity and grounded calm confidence and control of my presence control of my energy so that you can just be held by that yeah i want you to speak to something in regards to I, i'm not going to get the exact quote but the last time i did yin yoga travis had shared something from you know he Gandhi or Rumi 
I can't remember those. which one it is. One of those. Wisdoms. I think it was one of those two. But the point was that you can't actually multitask because you lose presence when you're trying to do more than one thing at a time. Yes. And, and I just want to share this. What I'm getting at here is something like talking to your partner while washing the dishes or something more simple like that. Presence means being in the moment that I'm in. And that means, right, multitasking, you can't multitask. No one can multitask. You can just be switching back and forth between doing two or three or seven or nine different things at once, but you're only doing one of them at a time. So bringing presence to my life in, in a way that I'm, again, living a life of self-control. I keep pointing at myself for the people who are listening to this on audio and not seeing it on YouTube. I keep pointing at myself as I'm saying this without even doing so intentionally. But I have to be present with my life. Here's one of the ways that I've learned to do one thing at a time. And to be present and be present in my own body. To slow myself down is to fully be in attentiveness to how I'm moving my body through time and space. Okay, that's kind of woo-woo. What do I mean? When I am driving a car, feeling what the steering wheel feels like on my hand, paying close attention to what it is that's out on the road, when I am washing the dishes, feeling the glass that's in my hand, feeling the sponge that's in my hand, feeling the warmth of the water, moving my hand intentionally to pick up the next thing that I'm going to wash and washing it with intention. So it's about bringing intention to the small things, the movements, the breath, the pace of my walking. And interest, interestingly enough, intention and intensity have, very, have the same root word. So when we can bring intention to something, we can bring intensity to it. Can I bring intensity to the way that I'm doing dishes or driving or walking? Not with tension, but with calmness intensity yeah and I, I want to speak to this piece because I remember this one moment when we were in the camper and you were doing the breakfast dishes and you had told me to just go sit down and enjoy my coffee and you were starting to share something with me because you know there's room for small talk whatever but you stopped what you were doing and you came over to me and actually had the conversation. And I have found myself respond in, in different ways. Like I can't completely be present with a, the depth of our conversations if I'm trying to do other things at the same time. And I used to do that all the time. I think society praises multitasking. And you've really reflected to me what it's like to not do that and how much more you can be present with each other. One of the, my favorite things that we do is either like sit and have a drink together or a cup of coffee. Like I love going out for meals together, but I've also witnessed how I don't enjoy my food as much when I'm lost in conversation because something come second 
when you're doing two things at one time. And I, can, I enjoy food. And so, like, there's times even over our meals that we just talk less so we can actually be present with what we're eating. The last thing that I want to touch on here today is to talk about the importance of a man being able to feel our woman. Now there's different ways of feeling. There's emotional and there's physical. Both of them are important. But I cannot know and tune into your emotional experience so that I can feel you if I'm flying a hundred miles an hour in my system and I'm in between one thing and the next thing that I'm rushing from and rushing to. I can never really actually connect to you, love you, and be loved by you if I'm moving too quickly. Can you notice the way that I am able to connect to you differently when I'm running at a slow pace versus if I happen to be rushing? Honestly, that's hard to answer because I don't, I can't even think of a time that you've rushed any time recently. Yeah, that was more of a way that I lived in the past than now when I'm stirred up inside of myself. I know that I feel you differently. I connect to you differently. Absolutely, to the way you just described that. Because if I'm in my head and I'm thinking about something or I'm worried about something, I'm not here with you. And so I cannot be in intimacy with you at all. Exactly. But I was also in that same state back then. So that's a little hard to speak to. But this is why I believe that the men, the masculine, the dominant, however you want to say this, has to go first. Because I have had to come into presence. I've had to come into slowness. I've had to come into intensity and intention and controlled presence and all of this in order for you to. Absolutely. I know I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for all of the work that you've done for yourself. But the other part of feeling you, it's not just emotional. It's also, I talked about having that controlled movement, paying attention to washing a dish or driving a car or tasting your food. But I'll give away one more tip here for the guys. When you touch your woman, have all of your energy and attention in your hand when you touch her. Don't just plop your hand on her shoulder, plop your hand on her knee. Don't just touch her breasts or her anywhere without first bringing presence to your own body like feel the way it feels to have your skin touch her skin and move slowly and with intention in the way that you touch her and you and she will both have an entirely different experience i can viscerally feel this just imagining you rubbing your hands all over me it's a completely different experience. If I sit down next to you and I'm just mindlessly stroking my hand up and down your arm, or if I sit down and I, I'll even do this, I'll look at my hand or I'll touch my like fingers together and notice what it feels like to be feeling my own hand before I touch you. And I put all of my intention, all of my attention, not on you, but on me. so that I am here when I'm touching you. 
and that I am in that touch. My love for you is in that touch. My care for you, my protection of you, it's in that touch. And men, I feel the difference. Every time. So, guys, I hope this episode has helped you to see the importance of slowing down your internal experience. If you want help with this, my course that I call Becoming a Dominant Man walks you through a 12-step process that shows you step by step, piece by piece, where to focus your attention on yourself and a way to organize your own growth into becoming the kind of man who has this self-control, has this sense of inner dominance. This is how you can have everything you've ever wanted in life by just focusing on yourself and on being the man that you are and bringing that into the world. That's always going to be enough. I want to see more men do that. So do I. And I love everything about that course and the way that it was put together. Not necessarily intending to make this into a commercial for it, but at the same time, I, it is the thing that I have made that I'm the most proud of since we started this business. It has like 120 lessons in it, and they are deeply, deeply potent tools for self-growth for a man to come into bringing the kind of strength that a woman needs from him and the world needs from him. And you are receiving testimonials all the time about the life-changing positive effects that they're experiencing in their 20 plus years of marriage together just starting to shift some of these i'm going to call them simple but profound things it's been incredible to witness and just experience glimpses into other people's relationships shifting and changing and because that like it's everything you know, these, the connection to feel more of who you are and more love for each other and yourself. It's fucking incredible. So to all of you who keep, who keep sharing those, just, we seriously love, love, love hearing them. So guys pay attention, start to slow down a little bit and start to notice your experience, be a little bit more present. Take a couple of these tips that I gave you here, especially about relaxing and opening this spot in the center of your chest, opening your heart to her and being intentional and present with your touch and watch what happens. And if you want more of that, that's what we're here for. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for watching and listening. We appreciate you very much being with us. Yes. Thank you so much.